and we're not only an integration company, we have expertise and consultants who are working pretty closely with Salesforce.com, Intact, Intuit, just to make sure clients who are using two different applications are able to make maximum use of any integration application which they're going to use. So let me uh, talk specifically about Salesforce.com and QuickBooks integration at this point of time. So we have tied up certain objects from Salesforce.com with QuickBooks and one of the default objects which we have tied up is account from Salesforce.com is tied up with customer in QuickBooks. So you can push your account information as a customer in QuickBooks. You can push your customer information as account in Salesforce.com. And contact is going to be a free flowing agent between these two objects. Clients who are using jobs, they can create jobs by using the opportunity name. If you don't want to use the job, you can directly generate invoices in your QuickBooks by using opportunity and line item dollar value. And as it is a bi-directional synchronization, you can push your transaction to create a closed one opportunity in Salesforce.com. The third default object is product, which is tied up with items. So, you know, anytime you create a new product in Salesforce.com, you can get pushed across as item in QuickBooks. Or if you're, if you're creating a new item in QuickBooks, that can get pushed across into your Salesforce.com as product. And also, we create a payments customer object within Salesforce.com so that you can keep track of the payment which are getting applied on the invoices so that your salesperson can do a proper follow-up on any of the account. Uh, this is pretty much the standard out-of-the-box solution which you'll get with DB Sync, but you can always extend the level of DB Sync as per to your business process. You can do the integration with any custom object, custom fields. You know, and it's not limited to the default object which I showed you earlier. Any custom object and custom field can get integrated. We just need to know what exactly is your requirement and we'll be able to achieve it on the platform. We support a multiple QuickBooks file, you know, and also multiple Salesforce.com can get integrated with a single QuickBooks instance. We also have database integration in place, and you know, Raji will be talking about it in a much more constructive manner after I'm done with the in QuickBooks integration demonstration. So let me quickly jump on to the demo, you know just to show you one record getting synced from salesforce.com into QuickBooks. So here I'm using my developer instance of salesforce.com and I'll be pushing across one opportunity information from salesforce.com into my QuickBooks desktop version. But just to give you an update, we also support online version of QuickBooks. I've almost filled up the information for this particular opportunity, so you can see. And I've added up a line item for that particular opportunity. And this is the dollar value which will be used for generating invoice in QuickBooks. What we do is that we have created a trigger as well so that you don't have junk data in your QuickBooks because until and unless you don't have a dollar value associated with a customer, you don't want that information to be there in your QuickBooks. So that trigger point is going to be the generate field. Generate field is the trigger point you know, which needs to be marked appropriately whenever you're running the synchronization. And you can select any of these transactions, whichever transaction you basically want to generate in QuickBooks. So for the demo purpose, let me quickly select that as an invoice. Mark the close date as today's date. And save the opportunity. As DBSync is a cloud-based solution, we don't have to install anything on your local machine. But we do provide an option wherein you can install the Tomcat server and have it run locally on your system. But by default, it will be coming as a hosted model. And for QuickBooks integration, 
will be using the QuickBooks Web Connector file for running the synchronization. And that is something which comes along with your QuickBooks. We'll be configuring the DBSync profile within the QuickBooks Web Connector. So you can see that this is a QuickBooks Web Connector file and we have just configured the DBSync profile within it. Salesforce QuickBooks Bidirectional. So when I run the synchronization, you know, that account information will get pushed across to QuickBooks, also invoice will get generated. If that information is already there in your QuickBooks, it will just update that customer with a new invoice. So right now I already have this customer and the job, so it will come over here and create a new invoice. You provide the option of running the sync on an auto run basis as well, auto schedule. So you can set the timing over here, you know, every five minutes, every ten minutes, depending on your business process. And you can have the opportunity flowing over to your QuickBooks, which are, whichever has been marked appropriately. Appropriately means you know whichever opportunity generate field is marked as invoice or estimate. For now, let me quickly run synchronization on a manual basis. So I'll just select the profile and click on update selected. It will take a couple of minutes as it will go and you know curate it up within DBSync and also in salesforce.com it will look for the opportunities which has been marked generate as invoice. And as soon as the synchronization is done we can actually go back to salesforce.com opportunity to see the copy of the invoice which has been generated recently in QuickBooks. Clients are using QuickBooks Online, they don't have to use the web connector file. We already have one button within salesforce.com which they can use. This is specifically for customers who are using QuickBooks desktop version. So for now, invoice has been generated, invoice number 80, but the synchronization process is still happening. Uh, the reason being, uh, this invoice will go back to the salesforce.com opportunity. Synchronization is over. Let me quickly open up the invoice which has come as today's date, closed one date. And this is a normal invoice, you know, normal look and feel of the invoice within the QuickBooks. So it has mapped over the bill to field which is there in salesforce.com. The item which we selected, the dollar value will pop up over here as a total payment. We always keep this invoice as pending non-posting because a lot of clients, they actually want their accounting person to finalize that invoice. So if they want to make any changes before that getting emailed, they'll be able to make the changes and then they can mark that invoice as a final so that it can get posted to the QuickBooks account. So let me quickly go back to the salesforce.com opportunity and refresh that. So as soon as the invoice is generated, uh, you'll be able to see the generate field as invoice updated. And this is one of the trigger from which you can make out that invoice has been generated in QuickBooks. And you'll be able to see the invoice number 80 over here with the dollar amount, payments, balance, days outstanding transaction date. So this is the accounting information which is coming over to salesforce.com and you can use this information in an appropriate manner by creating dashboard reports within salesforce.com. Also now we have integration for credit cards so you can have the credit card integration of authorized.net so this is the panel for that. We can just enter the billing name and process the payment within seconds from salesforce.com and also we provide the integration for credit card with PayPal so you can send across the invoices which has been generated recently to your clients and they can make the payments from that invoice and that information can get synced across to your salesforce.com. So this is pretty much